Hello there. The answer to all our troubles, the electric car, might now find itself banned from the roads of Switzerland. Now, if you haven't already done so, please do subscribe and then like and comment below. Just how long have we been pouring billions, if not trillions, into the net zero programme and not seeing anything now but looming blackouts and people having their electricity shut off because they can no longer afford to pay for it? Now here's a quick comparison. I find it strange that the UK had a vote and left the EU on the 31st of January 2020, not even three years ago and the Ramonas are pointing at the fallout of the pandemic and the Russia-Ukraine war and blaming all that fallout on Brexit. They refuse to engage with Brexit and will do all they can to derail it. In short, they do not and will not give it a chance. While at the same time, after decades of having the green agenda foisted on us at eye-wateringly high prices without a vote, with blackouts in the offing and the real prospect of thousands of people actually freezing to death in the UK this winter, we are told we must give green a chance. And with even more billions poured in, we'll be all right by 2050, we're told. Give it a chance, we're continually told. Just keep pouring the money into the wind and solar powered slot machine and one day you will win a jackpot. But in a sign of what the future probably holds for us, the Swiss government is looking at plans to limit the use of electric cars should there be an energy shortage. Switzerland could limit the use of electric vehicles in cases of electricity supply shortages this winter under a new four-step plan to prevent power cuts and blackouts, says oilprice.com. And the eco-lobby will try to convince us all that this is just short term and soon we'll all be driving around happily in our electric cars with charging points everywhere and sufficient electricity to power our new clean world. They will happily blame the problems we're facing over green energy on all sorts of other things, from nimbyism where solar farms and wind farms are concerned, or that not enough money has been poured into green energy, or that they're being politically obstructed. And they demand we sit in the dark and not put it down to the obvious fact that solar and wind do not work when the sun don't shine and the wind don't blow. Then we're told that instead of digging for coal, oil and gas, we must now mine for elements like lithium to make the huge new batteries that will now be the great saviour. As long as we pump billions more into it and wait yet more years to get it to work. It's like pouring money into a savings fund that always seems to get smaller but you're told to just shovel more money in and hang on in there and give it a chance. Now, Switzerland is not in the EU, but is sat in the middle of it and has a lot of deals with it to enable free trade, including power connectors to import and export electricity. And last year, 2021, Switzerland generated 80% of its own electricity from renewables, with 60% of that coming from large hydropower. And nuclear supplied 18.5%, and they're phasing nuclear out, with coal accounting for the final couple of percent. Now, with hydropower, in the winter wetter months, you should be able to produce more hydropower than in the summer with the plan being that you export excess energy in the winter via the interconnectors and import what you need in the summer. But this time, they're planning for the possibility of blackouts this winter, presumably because they'll be exporting more than usual into the EU. You know, the EU that threatened Switzerland with blackouts a couple of years ago unless Geneva signed up to a whole new deal giving Brussels and its ECJ more control over the Swiss. That EU. And all because the EU is suffering energy problems too. Big ones.
Ignore it when the Ramonas try to tell you all is hunky-dory in their EU nirvana. Because it isn't. But doesn't it sound great? Go electric, then ration electricity. Coming to a future near you. And while the UK sits on oodles of coal, gas and oil, but refuses to exploit it, the Norwegians are raking it in. In The Telegraph, Matt Oliver points out that the country has increased its pre-pandemic revenues from oil and gas of about £24 billion worth a year, up to over £100 billion a year. And their government has, of course, slapped a windfall tax on energy profits. And the UK is one of their top customers. 40% of the gas we use comes from Norway. Now, just for perspective, Norway is 17th on the list of countries with the most gas reserves and 18th on the oil reserve list, while the UK is 41st on the gas reserve list and 31st on the oil list. And while we've been busy buying Norwegian gas and boosting their economy and bolstering up their sovereign wealth fund now worth a trillion quid, we've been hanging back with the only plan being to import energy and hope that the sun shines, the wind blows and we have a mild winter. Now to the supermarkets. Although avian flu has hit poultry and egg availability, that's nowhere near the whole story. Poultry farmers are saying the supermarkets are more concerned with shifting frozen turkeys for Christmas and egg producers say that supermarkets won't pay them a fair price for the eggs, something I've covered before. On turkey production, The Guardian reports that those farmers who managed to get this far with intact flocks have been finding it hard to find buyers, especially the smaller farmers. Right now, people are buying frozen to make sure they do have a turkey for Christmas Day, and one poultry farmer from Cole in Lancashire wrote on Facebook that it being British reared or its welfare has mattered less. Sounds to me like the supermarkets are importing frozen turkeys in bulk under contract because of avian flu, and now no longer have the breadth of consumer demand for fresh turkey. In fact, they are more likely to refuse to stock fresh to make sure they can offload their frozen inventory first. But if they do turn to farmers at the last minute for fresh poultry, they will be hoping for bargain basement deals from stretched farmers willing to offload for a song just to pay the bills. I sometimes wonder how long it is before British farmers get together and start their own supermarket brand. And finally, when subscribing, please don't forget to press that little bell and also select the All option, or you won't get any notifications when I publish a new video. And thank you all so much for taking the time to watch the show.